Welcome back to the shop guys. Welcome back to the channel. So two weeks ago, something like that. Anyways, I went out racing with my good buddy Steve Warden Motorsports. Check his channel out. We raced his car at LS Fest. This time it was his turn. He came out to Cordova and went with me to the track. Anyways, we learned a valuable lesson. Not only did we set a new personal best, car ran a, the best of a 10, excuse me, 970 something at 139 fastest mile an hour fastest quickest et all that stuff it was a very good night one of the things we learned is that and it was something i've known for a very long time it's that part store alternators do not like to spin over 18,000 rpm and that's going to be rpm at the shaft on the R the alternator itself I'm going to insert here a chart and it's going to show blah, blah, but you can also find it on the Motion Race Works websites for the three inch and three and a half inch alternator pulleys. Either way, you can figure it out yourself. You're going to take engine RPM and the diameter of the crank pulley and the diameter of the alternator pulley. Do math, figure out the alternator's RPM. With a 10% underdrive pulley, and spinning the engine repeatedly to 7,000 RPM, I was spinning alternator at like 22,000, something like that. Way more than 18,000, and it cooked uh, before the even first pass, which is weird because I drove it to work like earlier that week and it charged at 14 volts, no problem. Anyways, alternator gave up the ghost. We were racing at 12 volts most of the night. Not the end of the world, just not great for everything else. Anyways, we're going to remedy that. We're going to remedy that with this unit right here. It is from Power Master. You see, I've already installed the pulley on there. I got it from work. It is a blem. And it is a blem for a few reasons, none of which matter for the function of the alternator itself. So, follow along. I'm going to wrap it on with a Harbor Freight Impact and a chrome socket because, well, there's a meme about it. Is that your bitch? Because she tell me she ready to go. Hey guys, while you're watching me throw this alternator pulley on, if you wouldn't mind, please check out the store. It's Trailer Park Motorsports, My Shopify. Link will be down in the description. Stickers, merch, shirts, 2025 calendars are here. They are done. Get yours today. Thanks. Back to the install. Stay hydrated, folks. And if you are going to stay hydrated, you might as well drink some Wisconsin water. Anyways. Why a power master and not another part store alternator? Well, the, the short answer is part store stuff is junk. S the little bit more complicated answer is that power master builds these to a tighter spec and a better performance. They also work with us and they put our pulleys on there and we put, we recommend guys to use their stuff when their part store junk burns up. Why did I pick this one in particular? And that one's re also really simple because of all the space constraints on this car all ICT brackets, all that stuff. I needed a CS130, whatever it is, alternator case. This, that's what this is. This is also a 165 amp alternator where the original F body alternator was 105 amps. So a bunch of fuel pumps, bunch of fans, EFI, blah, blah, blah. There's a higher electrical demand on this car now than there was in 1998 when that alternator was originally put together and spec'd out for an F-body. Additionally, this is the largest, because uh, I called them and verified this, this is the large, the highest amp amperage rating they could put inside this case. The next bump up for power rating was like 220 amps. It is a physically larger case, so I needed this one. 165 amps should still do the trick. Follow along and we are going to r r the burned up alternator and swap in this new fancy bolt. Just like that, we got the old one out. This one is about 10 years old. I bought it in 
oh, 2013, 14, something like that. It was right after I bought this car. I was in Afghanistan and then stationed in Italy. And then my dad was driving around the car, said it had a charging problem. They usually had to put it on the charger before he would take it out. Anyways, one of the first things I did was put a new part store reman alternator in, problem solved. So anyways, old one out, new one in. We've already prepped it with the pulley. You saw that already. The next thing up is we gotta take some tags off. And another feature of this alternator is that it, the Powermaster claim it is a one wire alternator. So the four pin plug that's on the side right there, you can see that. It told me I do not need to wire that for the Excite circuit. It will start charging as soon as the car is running. I guess time will tell and we're gonna test it and find out. All right, some other differences besides the one wire hookup is on the stock part store, whatever you want to call it, the Reman guy from AutoZone, charging post is on the back and the alternator itself grounds through the case and the brackets. On the PowerMaster alternator, charging lug is on the side of it and right here is the ground lug. This one must be hooked up or the alternator will not function according to them. It's not a big deal, you're just going to make a battery cable or a ground cable similar to how you would a battery cable. I will show you how to do that. It's real simple. Okay, if you haven't been watching for long enough or heard me talk about how I ground a car when I wire it, it's pretty simple. And some people say it's overkill, but I have never had to chase a ground fault yet. So anyways, the coils get grounded to the cylinder head. Mine are on the backside. The cylinder, the cylinder head gets grounded to the block using a ground strap similar to this. That way you're not trying to ground the ignition coils through your studs, through your gaskets, your copper spray RTV, whatever you want to call it, whatever you've got. It has a direct path from the coil to the head, head to the block, and then the block is also grounded with the same gauge wire that you have or cable that you have running from the start battery to the starter so in my case it is zero gauge running from the side of the block all the way back to the battery i learned this from what's his name troy Baum. either way i've never had to chase ground issues on this car or any of the other cars that i've set up this way bit for this alternator install is making the ground cable and shortening the power cable so on the power cable before it went back here and it was a little bit longer it wrapped around i shortened it and put it on the charge post that's on the side terminal all right if you want a little demonstration on how i make battery cables it's pretty simple start with the cut end strip the end back take the connector shove it on there smash it down and then put some heat shrink over it so anyways that's what I did for this one, and we're going to go ahead and install it real quick. Okay, so just finished up the install on that grounding cable. It was pretty easy. I didn't film it just because things were tight in there. But anyways, connects here. Connects the cylinder head in an unused bolt hole. Down. Right. Not that. Right there, the little Allen bolt, you see right here. That is the other side of the ground cable for the alternator. Now, that's all said and done. We got power connection, we got ground connection. The alternator is in its bracket. The pulley's torqued. The charge cable's hooked back up to the battery. And we got the disconnect pulled back. So let's give it a shot and see if it starts and if it's back to charging.
feet. That's going to wrap up this video. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, maybe you liked it. If you would mind, hit a like, hit a subscribe down in the comments. It really does make a difference. There's going to be a video up here in the corners that I think you might like. Check them out. Thanks for watching. Have a nice night.